finally, we, uh, at least for the class uh, today, we've considered what happens if I drop a ball, get over here so I can drop it from a little higher, on a surface from which it rebounds uh, pretty much elastically. Okay, that wasn't particularly, actually none of those are particularly elastic. Uh, coefficient of restitution looks like it's about 0.5 here. Anyhow, uh, assuming this thing does rebound elastically, the uh, question is what average force would it exert on this tile? If I continue dropping it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Okay, dropping it about once a second, it does exert some average force in the tile. Now that force comes in the form of a quick impulse uh, and then nothing, quick impulse and then nothing. <coughs> but you can imagine now somebody uh, with a, a sort of a machine gun mechanism uh, firing these things, uh, rapid fire at the surface. Um, I would begin to feel a more continuous force if the velocity is sufficient and uh, the frequency both sufficient, I'm not going to be able to hold this thing up. It's going to uh, cause my arm to descend. I won't have the strength to hold it against that onslaught. Uh, and that's where gas pressure comes from, very much uh, according to that model. So the question is, The question is first, what happens to the speed of the ball if it collides and rebounds with an, uh, w without losing any energy? Okay, you should think that through, but if it loses no energy, then it's got the same speed. Okay, it's got the same one half mv squared. But of course, uh, the velocity has changed direction. Velocity goes from this way to this way. Now then, the question is, um, if the, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the questions and let me stop here for a second, just a quick pause. Uh, the thing that threw me there is I just realized I wasn't really following the questions that I have here. It was near the end of the class, so I got off on what I uh, ultimately wanted to get into. Uh, you should answer the questions as they're stated. But what's going to come out of this is uh, that in a collision, uh, of a particle with a wall, the momentum of the particle changes, even if its speed doesn't. Okay, the ball comes in, it's got a momentum in this direction, it bounces back, it's got a momentum in this direction. That's a change in momentum. And if we apply the impulse momentum theorem to that, uh, we find that if we can uh, divide the change in momentum by a time interval, uh, the corresponds to, let's say, one collision. Uh, let's say if there's a collision every tenth of a second, we could take the momentum change for uh, one collision and divide it by that tenth of a second. Or we could say, okay, in one second there are ten collisions, so we can multiply the momentum change by ten and divide by one second, applying the impulse momentum theorem. And if you don't know what the impulse momentum theorem says and what it has to do with what I'm talking about, you want to review the impulse momentum theorem. Now that's as far as we got in class today. Uh, we'll extend this and uh, do a little bit more with this uh, very shortly.